stories they had will be taken from the perspective of the injustice done to evil people. And that this injustice is legitimate enough today to break the country is a different kettle of Sorry, sorry, Rajai. If I'm taking it from this other side of the divide, I mean, from your perspective, we are all entitled to our opinions. The people yes, who are agitating yes. for Biafra are entitled to their opinions, so they shouldn't be stopped. But if I were to ask you this question, um, by Mr. Ahmed Dada, if we looked at the presidential media charts, the president was very sad about the issue of Biafra. But he sounded like that is not really... It's not really enough to move me. I don't really see that as so much of a problem. I would handle, we would together collectively handle Biafra. Now he has talked about what happened from the past. There have been agitation from the past. There's been several issues. But I want to dwell on the present. Okay, the present Biafra agitation has been, you know, agitated by, has been um, reinstated by Nandikan on the basis that the Igbos have been marginalized. But the president came out of the media chat to say, how have they been marginalized? Is Ikachiku Ibe not an Igbo man? He started making mentions of different persons who are from the Igbo clan, who are members of his government. If they are saying they are being marginalized at present day 2016, would you, do you, what's your take? What's your hand on that? This is my own. You know, keeping things fall apart, like things that happened in the past, let's dwell on the present. This is, this is my own this enterprise called students of history. There's something fundamentally wrong with the graphical construction that we call up foundationally there's something absolutely wrong. I'll put my argument in analogy. Very same celebrated members of this society have been calling for sovereign national conference to enable all the diverse tribes to look at themselves and say, look, this is how we are going to cohabit. And some segment of the society says, no, we don't want anything sovereign. It's a no-go area. You must be bounded together by force, whether you like it or not. I don't care about your feelings. This marriage must work at all costs. I step on your toes, you want to complain, it doesn't matter. We are married. We have to stay together. Doesn't work. You know, I said, analogically, it is fathers that used to disown their children. But you know, the, the, the fear of the federal government of certain group of people is that, oh, when we go to a sovereign national conference, is we are going to it's going to split Nigeria. That means some people will say, I don't want to belong to Nigeria any longer. Then if there's a problem in the family and the children are the one agitating for a meeting to resolve the problem, and the father is saying, no, I'm scared that when we get to that meeting, my children are going to say they are no longer my children. That means there's something fundamentally wrong with the way the father has been treating those children. For you to be scared that your children are going to disown you, it's not just the Igbos alone. How do you have the OPC come about? In the north, you have the Boko Haram. What are they saying? Everybody has an ideology. By some of the, sorry to interrupt you. In every section, like in every section of the world, in every nation, there will yes. always be divides. There will yes. always be people who would be antagonistic of government, people who would antagonize policies and so yes. on. If I were to look at it from this pers perspective, I mean, looking at Biafra, yes. if at the end of the day, okay, we go for all of these sovereign, sovereign uh, meetings yes. for these sovereign committees, yes. now we're, we're already aware that the European Union is interested in the Biafra issue. Yes. Uh, let's assume, supposedly, worst case scenario, there's Biafra. Are the Biafrans ready to have a society of their own, to have a nation of their own? Do they have everything it takes to sustain a nation? Because Nigeria has been on for like how many years? I mean, you know what we've been through as a nation? Up until 2016, we're still not stable. We're still trying to find our feet and our balance. So if people are just for Biafra, away from personal gains and sentiments, that yes, I achieved this, what else do they, what else? Because like I said, once the foundation is faulty, then there's no amount of engineering that you bring that would rectify the distorted structure. But there's something fundamentally wrong with the enterprise called Nigeria. Nigeria. And we must be honest enough to say it. The Niger Delta Militant are there. The OPCs are there. The Biafras are there. Look, nobody wants Nigeria divided, but the terms and conditions it for being members should be clearly spelled out. I want to run. You are saying because you don't have the capacity to run, I should slow down. Sometimes, he, he rightly pointed out, the Igbos are very enterprising. You can't take it away from them. Somebody said if you go to any part of this world and you don't see an Igbo man, run away. Very enterprising, very energetic. 
An Igbo man will go to the um, Balogu market, sell in the morning. In the evening, he will be at the motor park, travel all the night to the Jam market, buy things throughout the whole of the night, the day. In the night, boss is back to Lagos. The following morning, he's back in, Ush in, a, back in his shop. What am I saying? There are these different ideologies. If the Yorubas have their ideology, if the Yorubas, the Igbos have, the Hausas have ideology. So you, until you bring everybody to a round table and say, look, let us define yes, our so terms so of our engagement. Look, for example, a situation where somebody from the east or the west will score 240 in jam and he applies to university. He's not admitted simply because he comes from an advantageous um, um, state or environment. And somebody else in the same country scores 140. And it gains admission to that. You cannot, look, it, it, it's not, there's something wrong. Let's, everybody has been agitating those, let's go back to federalism. What Igbos are basically asking for is, let me run my life the way I want, I want to run. If I believe I can fly, don't tie me down. That is what is happening. This energy, the young men that are crying for Biafra and not the rest of it, is just unutilized and unchanneled energy. Because the environment is suffocating. Look, look if you watch, um, what do you call it? Look at documentaries, watch CNN, see how young, able bodied men that should be developing this nation crossing the Atlantic because the environment is suffocating and choking. When you over centralize a system, that is what you have. The, 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 the president of this country virtually touches every, is the most powerful president in the whole world. I said, quote me, the most powerful president is the president of Nigeria. You, you talk about uh, the police, is there, you talk of uh, uh, EFCC, you talk of immigration, talk of M, he's virtually every. If you see the parastata that the federal government, the president has to approve appointment and not the rest of it, you just, you want to wonder that this guy must be a magician, he must be a superman. Okay, just a moment. Just, uh, 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 taking uh, from his uh, clue, you know, we've, we've, we've come to see the foundational issues causing this agitation. But you, recently, you, uh, you, the EU says that they will support their first struggle for self-determination with a condition of no armed struggle. What do you think is the implications of this uh, support to the unity of Nigeria? The, Biafra, the EU actually said, I have the letter, that's why I wrote the letter, the, let me, the letter from the, the EU. From the EU. <laughs> let me read it out. But that was what you have on the papers. <laughs> I thank you, that's Dr. Dr. Mr. Levy, writing on behalf of uh, the UN, uh, the EU Secretary. The, I thank you for your letter dated 22nd December in which you seek support from the European Union High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy for a petition on Biafra. Ms. Mogreni has instructed me to reply on her behalf. Second paragraph. The EU has a long-standing multifaceted relationship with Nigeria and engages regular dialogue and cooperation with the government and civil society. We follow all political developments in the country very closely. Protection of human rights and fundamental freedoms remains a priority for the EU, and we encourage the authorities in every occasion to respect such rights. So as far, Nigeria, could you please... Uh, in the last paragraph, it's, as far as questions of self-determination and changes to national borders are concerned, they are best regulated in accordance with established national law and relative customary practice. Yours sincerely. Peter Shadda. Now, I don't, I don't believe maybe that is they're really endorsing. I don't, I mean, maybe my English is poor. But let me agree with them. The foundation is very weak. But again, if Barry said that checks other countries, they have their fault lines. Every country, as much as Nigeria. As much as, look at Spain. Every time Barcelona is playing, you see people sing, um, singing Catalonian anthem to the extent that the UEFA got angry one day and said they would, they would punish everybody has issues in their, in, the, in their respective countries. You understand what I'm saying? But the fact of the matter that the Sovereign National Conference, it was the new, I must admit, under military rule. Samuel Ajay, let me ask yes. you this question. From everything you've read, I mean, you've talked about the fact that EU and Nigeria had had long-standing economic ties, you know, multifaceted multi multi bilateral ties and so on. But if he, he mentioned the fact that the foundation is wrong. At this point in time, what EU is saying, is this what we want EU to say, or is this what is favorable for us? 
If we were to profess submission to this, fine, we do know nobody wants Nigeria to be split. America did profess that Nigeria would cease to be one nation in 2015. So many persons said that. I, I, but a lot of people, a, 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 a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people wouldn't. A lot of people are not in support that Nigeria should should cease to be one nation. So if you were to profess solutions from the EU, what would you rather want to see from the EU? Would you want to see the EU put all of us on the same table, sit down, buy an agenda, and actually ended it in his, uh, towards the end of his of his uh, the contribution. contribution. The center is criminally, underline the word criminally, to be. Let me give you an instance. You know that we pay lip service to some of these fundamental issues affecting us. See, I won't mention if they know themselves. At a the time when they were in opposition, they were every day agitating for true federalism. Am I right? Yes. Now they are in power. Have they mentioned it again? No, because they are now in charge of their superintendent over our commonwealth which they were not in charge of that time. Like he rightly said, if the president of Nigeria wants to be making appointments, he'll be doing that in 2019, because he has about 5,000 appointments to make. But what would you rather want to see from the EU? What, what, ordinarily, what EU should advise the Nigerian government to engage, not even Biafran agitators alone. Biafrans, the those in the South-South, the OPC, they are a consultative forum. Everybody has a different idea about how Nigeria should be run. Why all of us have agreed? Okay, there's one agreement among all of us. Okay, we agree. We don't want to break. But on what terms are we going to stay uh, okay, together? Okay, you mean at this point we should you should bring into play the 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 meeting they had during uh, the last administration, bringing out the, bringing the, that's the, that, the political conference. Yes, yes out we everybody. can bring. Do you it. think they should implement it now? No, we can bring. See. Every, the problem, like the problem like Father Martin Azakuka said, the problem with Nigeria is we play politics with virtually everything. Everything, if I want to walk from this place to that door, you want to play politics with it. The way you walk, you have to look at the political implication of the way you walk. Who you look at, you look at the political implication. The point is that we want to play politics virtually everything. People will play politics. And this is very sensitive. And very, very sensitive. We have to go to that report. And you know, people have been referring to that report. But, but this government seems not to want to look into it. For political reasons. Okay. Because anywhere, in, look at the, look at, look, even look at the state. But you, in your own view, do you think is the way forward, looking at this, that report? I've not even studied the, the, the report, but I know it, it made, um, uh, how, how, do I, how do I put it, a very strong and fundamental ramifications about how the country so should, should be run. And one, there's another report that Nigerians are And how we should. We should. Steve Orosaye report about the evolution of powers. You understand? This a situation whereby look at VAT, look at so many things that states don't have control over. You are a, you are a governor elected by maybe a state of about five, six, seven million. You don't even have control. You can't even give instruction to the police commissioner in your state. If you are a different political party with the president, if the president can use the, that police commissioner to undermine your government. In very serious and area you are, the president does not even know what is happening in certain local governments in your state. You know you are probably from that local government. You know the nitty gritty. You know why people are fighting that local government. Maybe it has been on for the past 60, 70 years over what they are fighting over common boundaries. But for political reasons, the, the president can give instruction to the to the police commissioner, do this, do this, do this. And when anybody he said, I didn't give if the police, the commissioner was acting on this story. That is number one. People were asking for state police 10 years ago. You know who those were asking? There was an interview recently. So they now asked one of those agitators. He said, okay, do you still support state police in, state in 2015? Ah, you know, he said the times have changed. The things, the, it's no longer. But tell, ask me, between 2005 and 2015, right. after what has changed? Change. Things have only changed for the worse. Those are the fundamental. Look at appointments, parastatus. You understand? Everything is centralized. Look at the Venetian. Uh, how, the how much did the state share? 36 states will share less than 40%. The federal government will take about 50%. 5% will go to ecological force. 1% will have it. 30% will go to um, this uh, south south uh, the oil producing uh, area. Yeah. In other words, if all this state is in trouble now because there's a drop in oil revenue, because there are so many things, if they discover gold, iron, bauxite, uranium, in this place, the states don't have control over it. Sorry, Mr. Samuel Ajay, we'll come back to you. You're talking about their situation, but let me find out for um, Barrister Ahmed that looking at the entire Biafra scenario, I'm still going back to the presidential media chat. I mean, several questions about Biafra was from the journalist. Do you think
think that the way, the, the, the mode and manner we're going about Biafra from the Nigerian perspective, from, from the executive point of view, do you think about the right path? Would you, is that something you would want to see done from um, uh, Muhammad Buhari's administration, particularly for the Biafra, for, for, for the Biafra agitation? You cannot, you can't use military might to suppress an ideology. Because it's not a physical object that you can shoot down. It's a thin of the mind. Bullets have to fire. Meaning they have rights. See, 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 it's just like, it's just like saying you are going to be able to wipe out Islam or, 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 or Christianity. There are people that will tell you that, look, in fact, they will be very happy to say, just spray me with bullets. Because that's my convictions, and I'm so damn committed to those convictions. You can't, you see, you negotiate. You must sit down at the table talk and say, look, how do we ensure that adhering to your ideology will not create problems for you, every other person? Sorry, Barista, I'm a if, we, if we negotiate, don't you think in the later, later part of the day, there might still be issues there and there, like, she said it was generational. Yes. She said it was attitudinal. Yes. Much later, generations on board might still come up and bring up this answer once and say, okay, this yeah, is the way it is. See, so see, can, can I, you, if, see, let me tell you, if you read, if you read the, theory, the theory of the, the theory of a revolution, they always tell you that what is the recipe for revolution? You do not need any prophet to tell you. Very simple. When you constantly fail to meet the expectation, the honest expectation and demands of a set of people, you are brewing, you are, you are actually accumulating the recipe for an explosion. Very simple. If you must sit down and talk, that is what it's all about. Ultimately, even First World War, Second World War ended on the tabletop. We must keep talking. And, you know, let me just give you one scenario one day. I read a, a story of a young man. He woke up in the morning, a four-year-old boy. He said, ah, Mommy, ah, the, um, the, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an American family. He said, Mommy, um, there is this bad day. I want you to not forget the birthday of this bad day. Wow, I just remember today is their bad day. Everybody body dress. Just, mommy, Mommy, I want to tell you something. He said, don't keep quiet. I don't want us to be late for the birthday. When everybody walked into line. The boy said, Mommy, I want to tell you something. He said, Stop. I remember yeah, today is their bad day. With everybody, and they were going. The father, after driving several miles, the father said, This boy keeps saying he wants to say, say something. something. Just allow him to say what he wants to say. The mother said, Okay, say what you want to say. And mommy, I wanted to remind you that next week, Saturday, is the birthday of this family, and that we should not forget to buy them gifts. They've traveled several miles down the line. They now had to make a U turn for not allowing somebody to just air his mind. They went on a journey, frivolous journey. We must come back to the table. This, the, the, so, this, so, so do you I'm coming. The, the conference that Jonathan held, yeah. I, I have yeah. tremendous respect for his person and his person. But how many? What was the percentage of youths represented in that in that conference? conference. The guy, the, the owners of the future that you are trying to plan. You are you are making a contract on behalf of people that you are not even carrying along. Did you listen to them to tell you their own expectation? Let me tell you this, the, the, the present elderly generation, they were fortunate to have been born when they were born. They went to universities free of charge. They went to, uh, in UI in those days, they give them chicken. And when they are out, it is because instead of chicken, they gave them fish. They had potters cleaning their rooms. They had dry cleaners free of charge. They were issuing cars. They were eight in a class or 10 or 15 and in a class. Panay and the Panayia student will have to add a room to himself. They had a room to themselves. Do you go to a present okay, university? Okay, Barisa Ahmed, we're running out of time. Um, Samuel Ajayi, just in conclusion, Nigeria is multifaceted. I mean, lots of different complexity in ethnicities, different ethnic cultures, most populous black nation in the world. So we're bound to have issues, we're bound to have problems. The EU has come to intervene in this whole issue. Namdi Kanu is still arraigned in court. Uh, is, is, Namdi Kanu is still in court. What would you, if you were to... Still in prison. You know, if you were to increase it, thank you very much. If you were to, if you were to send the message out there to Nigerians on, on a practical note, what would your message? Because I think we have to revisit this. Question. So in the meantime, what's your message? If you ask me, I'm the primary director of the government. I don't want to get no no leader anywhere. Even for a promotion of interest, no leader will say not in my own that the country broke up. No, it's not something we're proud of in when writing members. But let like you rightly said. We have to sit down and negotiate the terms of this marriage. It's not by force. Okay, fine. Let's, we want to stay together, but let let us negotiate. What is good for the kids is good. Exactly. For the kids. Like you rightly said, you can't stay because you can't run. I could. I should not run. You can't do this. I can't. An average evil man is so creative. You understand? And in the north, whether we like it or not, the, the, the state is everything. Everything. They are like the gods around the state. 
And that is how it is in most of the Islamic societies. There's no separation between the state and the religion. We must sit down and placate this. The government should, uh, uh, the president should forget about, okay, Ikeshuku, Ikeshuku, Emefele, Ikege, all of that ministers. No. Forget about that. We must come together, sit down, and address the issues being raised by this. Why are you even asking for a secession? Okay, what's your... And, what's and, your and, 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 and barrister, that... We are, we are where we are because of the military mission. The whole thing is foreign money. So you mean that the situation will, will put a force to this? Look, let's go federal, to a true federalism. Let regions be creative. If God has given you land, farm your land very well, and turn your product to finished products. Yeah, I was able to come at the Niger Delta with dialogue. Do you think that this government has something to learn from that? Yes, they can. They can. They can pacify by turning them probably. They are also somebody was able to also ask for Niger Delta to ask for the But the real solution to the problem of Nigeria, the leadership class should accept that, look, we need to be creative, allow people to go back to true federalism, and let every region act the best that they have generated to run that way, so that the federal government will just take care of our foreign affairs, take charge of our um, um, yes, foreign affairs, fiscal and political policy. Economic yes, policy. yes, so yes economic economic policy. Policy. Thank, thank you very much, much Samuel Thank you very thank much, very much Barista Ahmed Dada. Thank you for coming. It's been a wholesome conversation here. It's been very emotional, very touching. We do hope to have a second revisit on this yes, topic. On this topic. Yes, so, we have so, much about so many interesting But in the meantime, we'll take a short break when we return the rest of the program.